Hello scholars, welcome back. We're talking about oceans, we're introducing the concept of what oceans are, and we're creating a framework for how we can think about the structure of how oceans are shaped in order to provide us the foundation to understand complex oceanographic processes. So let's set the stage, introduce marine provinces. The objective of this lecture is to identify and describe the three major provinces, including the characteristics that distinguish each region. So let's get into it. We have three distinct marine provinces characterized by their location in the ocean, how far away from the coast they are, and then also the depth. Marine province number one, continental margin. Marine province number two, deep ocean basin. Marine province number three, mid-ocean ridge. Here's a diagram of our three marine provinces. Continental margins are composed of features, continental shelf, shelf break, continental slope, continental rise. Deep ocean basins have the flattest places on Earth, the abyssal plain, also characterized by underwater volcanic features such as seamounts and geos. And then we have the mid-ocean ridge system, a tectonic boundary that is composed of an elevated profile with a rift valley in the middle. There's our introduction. Let's dive a little bit deeper. So a continental margin is the transition zone between land and ocean. And it is composed of four main parts. Now, what I've drawn here is a certain type of continental margin known as a passive margin, but we also have active margins, and this has to do with geology. Plate tectonics is the unifying theory of geology, and it states that the surface of the earth is covered by large, rigid blocks of rock that move around relative to one another and meet at plate tectonic boundaries. Now this helps explain why we have oceans, where continents are, mountains, earthquakes, a whole slew of geologic concepts. In oceanography, thinking about marine provinces, we have passive margins, no tectonic boundary, and active margins, a tectonic boundary. North America and the Pacific Ocean is an active continental margin because through California we have the San Andreas Faults. Above we have the Juan de Fuca Plate that's subducting into the North American Plate and then below us we have the Cocos Plate and the Nazca is even below that. Tectonic activity. This creates an additional feature for our continental margin but before I add that on, it is a volcanic trench, uh, an oceanic trench, but before I add that on, let's talk about the four key features of passive continental margins, meaning no tectonic boundary. So feature number one is going to be the continental shelf. Continental shelf. Great. So this is basically where the land becomes the sea. It's the shoreline. The shore moves up and down with the tide. And if you've ever been swimming in the ocean, you walk out and you don't just fall, plummet to the depths of the ocean. Nope, there's a nice, gentle slope that is the submerged extension of the continent. Here in this uh, digital elevation model, this would be the continental shelf, continental shelf continental shelf, we can see ocean features. So the typical depth goes from zero to 200 meters. The average width can be about 80 kilometers, so from here to here, but it varies significantly, much smaller in certain places, in places like uh, the Siberian 
plateau much, much longer. Geologically speaking, it's part of the continent overlain with marine sediments. These areas are rich in marine life in very productive zones for fisheries, which is why it's good for fishermen to go and harvest fish not too far from the land. There's a distinct break in slope. In fact, this is the transition between the continental shelf and the continental slope. This is called the shelf break. Shelf break is where the slope angle increases. The average depth of the shelf break is about 135 meters. Again, that is extremely variable. Here we can see on our another image cross-section of passive continental margins. This would be the continental shelf. This distinct line here is the shelf break. And then what we see below that is the continental slope. Oop, I think I skipped too far ahead. Okay, the continental slope is a steep descent from the continental shelf right past the shelf break. Continental slope. And it extends from the shelf break down to depths of about 3,000 to 5,000 meters. Uh, average between, the average is about four degrees of a slope, but it can vary anywhere between one to 25. The oceans are big, so it's not like you're just walking and all of a sudden, ah, and you fall down to the bottom of the ocean. No, it's really flat. It's really flat on the continental shelf, and then the continental slope will increase the angle. What happens in the middle of these, though, because we do have, this is not to scale, obviously, right? This is at least a 45 degree. Um, what happens is underwater avalanches of sediment called turbidity currents will carve submarine canyons into the continental slope. This is Monterey Bay off the coast of California. This is the Elkhorn Slough that's making its way into Monterey Bay. And then what we have is a ginormous canyon that's carved into the continental slope that is bigger than the Grand Canyon. It's really impressive and it's still eroding. Water that comes out of the mountains through the slough enters into the bay, creates underwater avalanches that transports a lot of material and then deposits it, deposits it at the base of the continental slope on what is known as the continental rise. Let's go ahead and add this in. So the continental rise now is the transition between our continental margin and deep ocean basin. We get deposits here called turbidite deposits or graded bedding where you have alternating grain sizes. Some, a little geology shout out, throw it in there, heck yeah. Um, it's also the transition between oceanic crust and continental crust, another geology shout out. Um, we'll learn more about that in marine geology and plate tectonics. But beyond the continental rise, we get the deep ocean basin. Okay, so now this is passive. This would go right into our deep ocean basin. But there's one more feature that I would like to discuss. This is the ocean trench. So if you have a little bit of geology background, this will make more sense. And otherwise, your aha moment might come later. Or you can go check out the video on marine geology where I discuss plate tectonics. But at an active continental margin, we will get a feature known as an ocean trench. This occurs at, an, at a subduction zone or a convergent 
plate tectonic boundary. It's not the only place that these exist, but these exist at active continental margins. So let me repeat that. Passive continental margins are not associated with any plate tectonic boundaries and therefore do not have an oceanic trench. Active, uh, active continental margins are associated with plate tectonic boundaries and therefore have an oceanic trench. Now these are the features of the marine province known as continental margins. Great, okay, I would like to continue our discussion to the deep ocean basin. And from land, we will always have a continental margin. After the continental margin, it will always transition into the deep ocean basin. We said we divide marine provinces by depth and location. So if we erase all of this, and I'll go do, 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 do. Let's put in the continental margin here. Shelf, shelf break, slope, rise. Okay, so we're gonna call this the, I'll just put a CM, the continental margin. Then we have, where do I go to? Blue, the deep ocean basin. Now the deep ocean basin, also known as the abyssal plain or the abyssal basin, are covered with sediment. They're pretty deep, greater than 4,000 meters, 13,000 feet. They cover a very significant portion of Earth's surface. There's a lot of deep ocean basin in the middle of the oceans, and they have unique geological and oceanographic features. These features might stick out of the sediment. The sediment that makes its way out into the deep ocean basin that rains down is gonna be primarily very fine grained. It's composed of silt and clay and accumulates slowly over time. Underneath of the ocean of the marine sediments is the bedrock geology, the rock type basalt, and that is produced from the mid-ocean ridge. Now, there are certain areas in the middle of the ocean that are volcanically active. And these volcanically active areas have specific names. So if we have a volcano in the middle of the deep ocean basin, it's known as a, ah, uh, no, a uh, seamount. I got seamount and Gaio mixed up for a second. That's why we have the slides, it's known as a seamount. Now, if this seamount continues to grow and it breaches the surface of the water, we now call this a volcanic island. Earth is highly variable and dynamic, and over time, that volcanic island might be susceptible to wave action that will then reduce the top. We'll put it over here. The top of that once volcanic island underneath the surface of the water. And now we call this a geo. Features of deep ocean basins include very flat areas and then volcanic features known as seamounts, volcanic islands, and geos. If we continue our exploration from continental margin to our deep ocean basin over to the center of the ocean, it's what is known as the mid-ocean ridge. The mid-ocean ridge is a tectonically active region where seafloor spreading occurs. New Earth is created at a mid-ocean ridge, and that new Earth is happening at what is known as a divergent tectonic boundary. Now, the mid-ocean ridge system is 
a string of volcanoes, 65,000 kilometers or 40,000 miles long that wraps around the center of every ocean basin like the seams of a baseball. They're a string of volcanoes. They're active, they're erupting, and they create new Earth. Here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we have the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It goes down all the way through the Southern Atlantic, wraps around the entire Earth, and is connected. The average depth of this is about two and a half kilometers above the seafloor, the adjacent deep ocean basin. And it happens because of a thinning and a lifting of mantle material. Okay, again, more geology. These are terms you will hear a lot. Continental margin, deep ocean basin, mid-ocean ridge. I use this to describe and discuss and teach what's happening in the oceans because it provides such a great framework. So inside of the mid-ocean ridge is what's known as a rift valley. Mid-ocean ridges are elevated. They're creating new earth that spreads out on either side. There's a valley right in the middle of them. And they have pretty cool features where the lava that erupts underneath the surface, it kind of bubbles out like a marshmallow that you've thrown on the campfire and it just gets too hot and it bubbles and it breaks its skin that's, that's become crusty and melty all at the same time. And that new type of material is known as pillow lavas because they look like little pillows. Actually, you can't see the laser pointer. They look like little pillows underneath the ocean. The other feature associated with mid-ocean ridges are hydrothermal vents. So when this is happening, and I know I'm just drawing pictures up here, but bear with me. When this is happening, there might be cracks in the rock where water becomes superheated. That, super, that water makes its way down the cracks, becomes superheated, makes its way back up. As it does, it dissolves various minerals within that water, and then that water ejects and precipitates forming pillars or towers known as hydrothermal vents, geothermally heated water that precipitates on the bottom of the ocean floor near mid-ocean ridges that produce unique ecosystems of life that don't need the sun to support their survival. Uh, on land, producers photosynthesize using sunlight, water and carbon dioxide to produce energy and oxygen. But at the bottom of the ocean, there is no sunlight because sunlight only penetrates about one kilometer deep. And we're talking much deeper than the sun can go. So in the absence of sun, there's a process called chemosynthesis, whereby these hydrothermal vents provide the source material for archaea and bacteria to utilize those chemicals to form the basis of the food web. Pretty cool. We'll talk a lot about hydrothermal vents in many different avenues. So marine provinces have a lot of features. Continental shelf, shelf break, continental slope, continental rise, submarine canyons, and oceanic trench. Deep ocean basins have Guillaume's, seamounts, and volcanic islands. The mid-ocean ridge is present and it has a rift valley. And you're welcome to pause the video, take a moment, see if you can identify A through J or A through, yeah, A through J and all the features that are on here. Go ahead. Okay, welcome back. If you didn't pause it, that was probably awkward, but that's okay. In conclusion, I kind of mentioned this a moment ago, but this is a really important lecture to establish a framework of the oceans because having this setup, continental margin, deep ocean basin, and mid-ocean ridge, we can look at various processes. We can understand primary productivity and nutrient cycling. 
We can think about ocean circulation from surface currents to deep currents in the processes of upwelling and downwelling. There's so much more that this will help us to understand graphically. And so I really like how we can apply, divide the ocean basin into the three marine provinces, continental margin, deep ocean basin, and mid-ocean ridge that will support our further learning in complex oceanographic processes. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.